Well, you know that I have been interested in the Afghan box camera for a long time. These are a large format camera, typically using paper negatives, that employs a dark room, a little miniature portable laboratory in the camera itself for developing the paper. And they've been used in many countries over the last century or so. Well, I built my own uh, primitive version of an Afghan box camera about mm, 10 years ago, maybe. But after that, I started sketching ideas for a different style, one that was more vertically oriented with vertical slot tanks instead of open, flat trays of chemistry. And uh, I got together with my friend Ethan Moses, and together we designed this new type of uh, Afghan box camera that we're calling the ABQ box camera and Ethan has laser cut me a flat pack kit of plywood parts so I could build my own version of this new project and that's exactly what I'm going to do. This is part one of building the ABQ box camera. Stay tuned. Well okay so it's late in the afternoon it's a later start than I was hoping to get but I have the main frame or the outer panels of the ABQ box camera taped up. I have the joints kind of taped to help control the spread of glue. I got my clamps ready. I'm gonna start gluing together the main body of it. Okay, let's do this. I got the main body of it glued up. So um, the tape, right? I put the masking tape on right at the base of all the finger joints so that the glue wouldn't spread to the rest of the body's body panels and make a big mess. Of course, I put glue on all the edges of all the finger joints, got them pushed in there, got them clamped. Uh, you can't really have too many clamps. I really need one more like this to put on the other side, but it's actually feels like it's pretty tight over here. And then you want to wipe as much of the excess glue off on the corners because later on, we're gonna be gluing in these strips that are gonna be lights, light baffles for the corners to make it light tight. But I think we're good right now. Let it dry. Um, I also put down some plastic film on my table so the glue wouldn't uh, make the table too messy. But there they are, it's a good starting point for putting together the ABQ box camera. Well, let's take a look at some of the sub-assemblies we will still have to glue on. So first of all, this is the back flange, the rear of the camera. It has this piece that's gonna be glued onto it here. And you'll notice uh, these cutouts and these screw holes. And what those are for is the actual hinged lid is gonna be situated here. There will be a piano hinge along here. This will open up to the right. There will be a hinge here on the peep sight door. It has a lock here that you can unlock the door. And then these two will have their own sliding locks that will keep the door closed on the left side like that. Okay, these parts involve the lens board and the front of the camera. So I've just dry fitted the bearing rods through the holes here. And you can probably see the two brackets and the square frame. Those will be located here, and the lens board will fit on the front side of this window frame. And these are the screw holes for those um, sliding locks on the front. Film gate will be riding up and down or back and forth on those rods. So I have a bunch of little frame sticks that go around the corners and edges, and some of those are going to support this three-sided frame that gets glued in there. And that frame supports this little shelf for the uh, chemical tanks. And this shelf is removable. And then we have the actual film gate itself. It's a rotating film gate. It has a lock here that opens up and you can rotate it. We've already bolted it together. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of hardware and a lot of pieces of wood in there. And the bearings for the rods are already in here, clamped in the piece of wood. So, like that, rides nice and smooth, like that. Well, so the next step is, I've taken the clamps off, we have this flange for the door that we need to glue on, and so I'm going to have to remove the tape here, and then we can start working on the interior. Well, 
Well, okay, so we have this flange glued down. So the screw holes for the slide brackets here, I've lined up those holes from here to here with these uh, machine screws, these metric machine screws. So those are in place. So that kind of lines up the, both flanges together. Got some clamps going here, and we're just gonna have to let that dry. And then the next step will be installing these uh, sticks down on the corners and edges inside to give it a light tight seal well good day it's the next morning yeah we have this flange nicely glued on now what we have to do now is we have to prepare the edges of the box inside for gluing these sticks in and these sticks are basically just guarantees that you don't have any light leaks we do have a little bit of glue in the corners so i have one of these uh Japanese carving knife. It's a 90 degree angle knife. And so I'm just going to kind of clean up some of these corners with the glue, excess amounts of glue, kind of get it off. And then we can uh, get these sticks glued in place. So I put on the small sticks here and I've added this U-shaped frame which is the support for the shelf for the chemical cabinets or chemical tanks. I've tried to keep as much of the glue off the top edge because that shelf has to sit there. I've done some glue fillets on the underneath side of this shelf, just so it'll hold and we'll let this thing cure. Okay, so this is the uh, lens board bracket. I just got a couple screws here that locates it and I'm gonna draw a pencil mark that's going to define where I want to put my glue at when I glue this in. Here's a view of that bracket from the inside, and you want to have these holes uh, here so they line up with the holes over here. And you also want to have these holes here lined up on that bracket because those are for the screws for the slider locks for the lens board. Well, okay, so I got that bracket clamped, glued and clamped. Here you can see it on the inside. Yeah, you can never have too many clamps when you're doing these kind of jobs. So what I want to do now is get my rods and line them up. Make sure things are gonna look good. It looks looks okay. Get that magnet, stick that there. That's pretty cool. Once that bracket dries, uh, we're gonna glue these two onto the inside of that bracket also. You can see that the, the holes in here will support the uh, the bearing rods and the screws here for the um, bolts, screw holes for the bolts for these locking uh, slide locks. So, okay, so I'm gonna mark here with a pencil. I'm gonna get a little bit of the glue away from the holes. The glue is going to spread when I clamp it. Okay. Let's put our alignment screws in through the holes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put these brackets on and get the nuts secured. Alright, so here's the film gate. Slides on those bearings very nicely. Okay, so I'm getting the bolts and nuts put in for these slide locks for the front door. We didn't have hinges for these kits yet. I'm supposing when Ethan releases this kit, he'll probably have hinges, door hinges, like a piano hinge for this. And it's probably a good idea to double nut these so you can uh, secure the nuts on the bolts and still let them be loose enough uh, to slide adequately. Okay, so the back uh, or the inside back panel of the door, I haven't actually glued it down yet. So I got a couple screws here, 
centering it on the arm sleeve flange. I have this inner panel that forms a light trap clamped with some boards, gluing, gluing up, and I have the screw holes lined up with some hardware so everything will line up. Okay, so I've marked the center of the door here. It's 19 inches, so this is nine and a half. And then I've marked six inches from either side of that center point. That is the 12 inches for my piano hinge. So now I'm just gonna center the edges of the hinge on those two marks here and then center the hinge itself, the hinge pin in the gap of the door. Make sure this gap is even. And then I wanna mark all these holes properly. Okay. I'm going to use a punch to get the center of each hole with a dimple. All right. All right. This is our little peep sight door. So before I put the hinge on, I really need to glue the middle part, which is the light trap. Make sure it's straight on my pencil mark. Okay, cut those off so they won't uh, hang up. And there we are. Okay, so I bought a couple uh, furniture knobs, or drawer knobs at the hardware store, kind of brass to match the hinges. Gonna have to drill out this hole to fit these screws. But uh, yeah, to have a nice little pull knob here would be a, a better thing than just having a little screw or whatever. I'll just drill it from both directions so we won't blow out the wood. I also have another uh, cabinet knob uh, that I'm going to install on the main lid. I probably won't put it right here because it'll interfere with the uh, flange ring for the arm sleeve. I'll probably put it up here maybe, something like right there. Okay, let's look and see how we can jam these two nuts together. So this sliding lock is loose enough to slide, but the nuts don't come loose. So what you want to do is you want to tighten the back, the outer nut, the one on the back, all the way so the screw is completely tight. And you, you're basically jamming the two nuts together. Now you take the front nut and you back it off and that will keep the two nuts jammed but it will loosen up the bolt so the bolt can turn now there's another there's a little bit of freedom for that lock but the two nuts are jammed together and now it slides much easier well at this stage of the build the body is all put together, the door and all the hinges are on. So I don't have the ring flange for the arm sleeve. We still need to 
to cut that and I still need to make an arm sleeve. And of course, all of the screws for that flange have to be double netted also so they don't come loose. And um, on the focusing screen, I'm going to double nut all these bolts because this particular flange has to slide or has to rotate from landscape to portrait orientation. So the uh, screws need to be a little bit loose. There has to be a little bit of play for this thing to rotate, but you don't want them to come loose. And the same thing true double netting these uh, slide lock brackets for the lens board. So those slides can uh, operate but not uh, come loose. And of course the whole interior needs to be painted black and the exterior needs to be sanded and finished in whatever kind of finish I'm going to do. And then there's also the bottom here. So we have these captive hexagonal pockets for our 3 8 uh, tripod bushing. So we're, we're using 3 8 uh, nuts and then we can adapt those down to quarter inch for standard quarter inch tripods. Uh, so these need to be mounted here and also these extra pieces of wood will elevate the the tanks, the slot tanks, um, at the proper height. The build is kind of done as, as far as mechanical uh, build, but it all needs to be finished and uh, to make a functional uh, Afghan box camera or ABQ box camera. Also, my ground glass, my plastic acrylic, and with magnets, I need to install that as well. This was part one of the ABQ box camera. It was designed conceptually by me, this idea, and then Ethan and I, mostly Ethan, did the CAD work on this particular version. Uh, it looks really promising. Uh, Ethan's already used one of his prototypes out in the field several times, and it looks like it works really well, so I'm looking forward to finishing this camera and start using it. Uh, so we'll have another uh, episode of this uh, little short series, uh, how I finish this box camera, and then of course I'll start using it as well. If you're interested in the Afghan box camera, I encourage you to drop a note down below. Let's have a dialogue about these. And until next time, you guys stay well and stay creative. Have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.